All right, let's take a look now at example two. So this is a problem that's going to be very similar to what we did before, but you're gonna see that it behaves a little differently based on the number that is being acted on by the exponent. So they show this y equals one third to the x. It says find your y intercept, state your domain range in the equation of the asymptote. So the main thing I want you to notice about this one is it's kind of like a, like a reversed, almost like a reflection of the last one you just did, right, uh, of example one. It's instead of uh, being, you know, really low on the left side and then it crosses the x-axis and then it gets really big, it does the opposite. It starts out really big on the left side and then it comes down and then as it crosses the x-axis, it starts to get really small. If you look at what's under the exponent, it's a fraction. So if you think about it this way, if you've got the number three and you've got the number one third, well, if you raise three to an exponent, if you raise this to one power, it just gives you the same thing, right? Three. If you raise it to the second power, right, that would give you nine. This would give you one ninth. If you raise this to the third power, this would give you 27, this gives you 127. So they're like, they're multiplicative inverses of each other. So it makes sense that the graphs are kind of opposites of each other. So let's take that and let's look at an actual example of this. All right, so in this problem here, it says graph one half to the x minus one. So this is, this is going to be um, a little different in a couple of different ways. So, We've got our numbers there, let's put them in. Let's see what happens. So you start with one half to the negative two power minus one. So one half to the negative two. So the thing is, whenever you raise anything to the negative power, basically you're flipping it, right? So if you had three to the negative two, it would be basically like three over one to the negative two, you flip it, you get one third to the two, right? That's kind of the way that works. So it's sort of the same thing with this, except that you're already starting with it already as a fraction, so it's gonna flip-flop. So you're gonna wind up with two over one to the two power, because that's kind of what we did, minus one. So that gives you four minus one. So four minus one is gonna give you three. All right, and you can see that as you make those numbers bigger and bigger, even if they're negative, they're larger absolute value, it's going to, as it goes to the left, it's gonna get kind of huge. All right, so let's take a look now at negative one. Basically, same kind of concept. One half to the negative one minus one. So that's two to the one minus one, which is two minus one, which is one, all right? Zero, anything to the zero power is one. So you wind up with one minus one, which is zero. All right. And then here, right, we put one in. So one half minus one equals negative one half. And then if you put two in, you have one fourth minus one, which is negative three fourths. And I think what you'll see over time is what happens with this is it gets closer and closer to negative one for a y value, but it will never quite reach it because it's always gonna be a fraction minus one. So it's never gonna get zero minus one, which will get you negative one, but it'll get you something really close to that. So if we put these values in, good. you get the point negative two, three, so you have something right here, you have the point negative one, one, which gives you right there. You have zero, zero, and then all these values get closer and closer as you go. So you're gonna wind up with something that looks like that, and it'll get closer and closer. So for your domain, again, you can put in any value you want, so that would be negative infinity to positive infinity. 
your range, well, your range goes from negative infinity because it's the opposite of the other one, right? And then as it goes up, it gets it gets closer and closer. Or sorry, I screwed up. That would be positive infinity because y is going up and down. And then as you go over to the right, it gets closer and closer to negative 1. So we are going to turn around and we are going to rewrite this. And we will say that y never reaches negative 1. And then it goes up closer and closer to infinity. I made a common mistake and I got kind of turned around on that. All right. And then for your asymptote, so this one, if you look at it, it's almost like it shifted down one. And that's actually absolutely what happened because if you look at the equation right here, they call this, um, they call this when you, when you um, translate it. And so we kind of translated it down one. We dropped, we shifted the whole graph down one. So our asymptote, instead of being y equals zero, is gonna be y equals negative one because it'll get closer and closer to that, but never touch it. The one last thing we gotta find, which we didn't find the last time, is we gotta find the y-intercept. Well, the y-intercept is just what value do you get when x is zero? So when x is zero, y is zero. So your y-intercept is zero. All right, good luck.